Hey guys, Weep here. Welcome back to another video by Variety MMOs. In today's video, we're going to be talking about everything gathering. The four gathering types available in BDM, fishing, collecting, woodcutting, mining, and we'll also be talking about tips to efficiently do them. Before we talk about gathering, let me give you some tips on efficiently using your action points so you don't waste them. So first up, action points are your resource up here that gathers over time. This is what we're going to be talking about when we're talking about gathering in this video. So first up, for those people who like to buy to get ahead, you can open up the store, go to best deals, go down to support, and then have a look at camp plus 14 days. So camp plus 14 days makes it so your stamina consumed when gathering is minus 40%. So basically you can gather an extra 40% more and you get an extra 20% when resource gathering. So it is a very effective way to do the method I'm about to talk about. In the soft launch, there is also a daily event on the sixth day. It'll give you a three day camp plus, which is the same thing that lasts for three days. So you can save these methods and use them a little bit later if they give them to you on global launch or do them straight away. Okay, so second up is the level of skills. So if you open up your inventory and you go to my info, you'll see down here your life skills. As they level up, they will give you higher level materials while you're gathering. But not only that, Let's say you reach level 10, for example, when you go to gather and go to world gathering, you'll notice that this one isn't open 16 hours. So I cannot send away my villagers for 16 hours. The reason being is because I'm not high enough level in those skills. So when you raise your level in your gathering skills, it allows you to send your villagers away for longer. So you don't have to go to your village as often, which is really, really helpful. One other thing is the action points that I spoke about earlier. A cheesy way at the beginning of the game to obtain action points is that there's an achievement that requires you to hire workers. And the way to abuse this is to go to your pub and hire a worker, then dismiss them. Hire a worker, dismiss them. There's usually about a 5 to 10 minute timer. So you come back every 5 to 10 minutes and you keep hiring and dismissing workers and you basically get free potions to get more AP so you can get your gathering up faster. You can also get AP from other things like knowledge and a lot of other things in the game, but we won't be talking about that in these videos. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the gathering types. So first up, as I've mentioned, the four gathering types in BDM are fishing, woodcutting, mining, and collecting. Each material goes to a different thing in the game, so you do need to raise all the skills eventually. So first up, let's have a look at fishing. So where I'm doing fishing is on the first map in the game which is located here in Valia. Any location that if you open the map and it has a fishing symbol, it means that you can fish in that location. I would generally just fish here because it's pretty easy to do. So all you really need to do is go up to the water and you'll be given the prompt to fish. And you basically click on it. You'll notice that when I'm doing fishing, that it doesn't actually cost me any AP to do this, unlike the other gathering skills. This is what makes fishing a little bit unique. So we're waiting right now for a fish to pop up. Sometimes it can take between five to 30 seconds. So you have to be a bit patient, but not everybody will like doing this the manual way, which is why I'm also going to show you how to auto fish. Okay, the fish has popped up. You basically click it in the green area and you have a chance to get a fish. So I got a mud skipper fish. Okay, so the AFK method I was talking about was if you go up into the menu and go down to sleep, then click black spirit mode and then click auto fishing, it'll fish automatically. It's nowhere near as effective as doing it manually, but it is still fish and food. So down here, you'll notice that I'm at 6.2% XP. It might be a bit hard to tell right now, but if you fish at a low level, let's say level 20, for every fish you catch, you're going to get like 5 or 6% XP. Basically making it effectively the fastest leveling method in BDM on launch. However, there's a catch that some people have been running into. What people have been doing is they've been using fishing to say level from 15 to 30. And 
they've gotten more than six levels above the mobs they're fighting. And because they've done this, they no longer get loot. And they no longer get loot, so they're effectively ruin their character and their account. So, if you are going to fish and get a couple levels, make sure you are not more than six levels above the mobs you're supposed to be fighting. Otherwise, you're going to run into big problems. Okay, so now that we've caught a couple of fish, let's go and have a talk to the NPC up here. So this NPC here offers quests to capture fish. So you just talk to him, basically pick up a quest, and he will buy them and get a bit of a bit of uh, resources. Or you get fish delivery. In here, you can basically deliver the fish if you have them. As you can see, the prices are kind of low. But at the beginning of the game, if you're struggling for a bit of silver, you just like the fish, you can always do this. So if you don't want to hand your fish in for fish delivery, another thing you can do is if you open up your inventory and find a fish and click on it, it'll go store food. And it's going to put food into your base. As I showed you the base earlier, what I'm talking about is the mana. And the food is basically used for everything in the mana. So having extra food that you can use at any time is not a downside. Having fish is good. Uh, if you can't hold them all on you, just put them in the box in the mana. Okay, so that covers about everything to do with fishing. So now let's, let's go and have a look at woodcutting. So for woodcutting, I would recommend going to the map, going to Balinos, teleporting to the Western Guard Camp, and then running to the Forest of Seclusion. The reason I recommend this is because all three gathering nodes are here, and there really are a lot of logs to gather. There are low-level mobs, so nothing will attack you, and nothing will distract you away from gathering. Okay, so let's have a look at Auto Farm. So when you're leveling up, I believe you need like level 30 or 40 Black Spirit, you can use your Auto Farm. So if you drag it up, then you can click Auto Woodcut. So because I clicked on the axe, it's only going to click logs. It's very inefficient because as you can see right now, it's going to run into a lot of stones and a lot of walls and stuff. It will generally fix itself, but it is a lot slower than you would be doing manually. You can do this if you've got a bit of AFK time, and you'll notice that I'm getting 0.2% XP, but as with fishing, at about level 20 to 30, you'll be getting 5 to 6% per time you do this. And if you use all your stamina pots, you can get like 4 to 5 levels and get more BP to help you get through the quest line. This is personally how I leveled up pretty quickly in the level 20s to get that extra BP to push through those harder quests. So, why do you want to use wood? So, wood is mainly used for the mana, as we talked about earlier. So, the wood, you if you look up here, you'll see the resources that I'm currently sitting on. This is the basic wood resource, and this is the advanced ones. You're going to be using a lot of basic wood when upgrading your base, so I would recommend using about 80% of your action points on wood, because you need wood to upgrade all of your buildings in your base, so you can upgrade your base and get high level materials. So again, about 80% of all your action points should be used on wood cutting. If you do not, you will fall short, and you will not be able to upgrade your base, and you will run into B blue walls. Okay, so unfortunately, I do not have a great location for mining. So I basically just use the same place for mining on auto mine. There is quite a key difference between mining and woodcut though. Mining, you need a little bit of it to upgrade your base, but about 20% of your action points should be used on mining. But when you upgrade your mine, you're not going to get many rugged boulder, which is your lowest level material which you need to upgrade your base. For some reason, when you get to about level 10, it seems to always give you higher materials. You can trade the materials using the auction house trading place in the manor, but it is quite inefficient, so you don't want to do it if you can help it. So basically, stone is used to upgrade some of your buildings like your blacksmith and your alchemy place, but it can also be used to craft goods which can then be used to sell and various other things. I'll talk a little bit more about crafted goods a little bit later in the video. Next up is collecting. So collecting is basically the same thing as mining and woodcut and generally done the same area personally, except that this will actually get you collecting materials. Collecting materials are cotton wool and various other goods. So these goods down here. The reason you want these goods is that they're primarily used in trade goods, potions, and even in Korea, you can make action point potions out of them. So, they're actually quite effective in Korea and in Global. Unfortunately, on launch, they're not as important as mining or woodcutting, 
So I would do about 5% collecting. So if you see a node, collect it every now and then, but do not go out of your way to try to get these. Otherwise you're gonna spend your AP where you desperately need it. So as I've mentioned early in the video, I would recommend about 75 to 80% wood, 15 to 20% stone, and about 5% of your collect. Okay, so as I've mentioned, collect and mining, let's go and have a look at the base and some of the materials that you can actually create. Okay, so now we are in our mana. First off, let's have a look at the alchemy lab. So the alchemy lab usually has potions and as you upgrade the building, it'll allow you to create higher and higher potions. Please note that on soft launch and global, you cannot actually get large HP potions, which heal 300 HP. The maximum that you can currently get is medium pots. So you can potentially make these and sell these if you wish. Remember, as the building goes up, higher level things can be created. Next up, let's have a look at the trade shop. So the trade goods can be taken into town and traded with local NPCs to obtain silver. They can also be used in a minigame that is in Korea much later and they can make a massive amount of money. But I doubt that money game is going to be out anytime soon so I would not focus on it. Please keep in mind that when you create these, they take up a substantial amount of room. However, resources on the right do not take storage space. So you can pretty much collect them indefinitely, assuming that you have enough room to store them. The last thing we're going to be looking at is the blacksmith. So in here, you can create purple level items and you can sell them on the auction house or you can fuse them together and various other things. So all the materials are used and they are all needed. But again, let me stress that upgrading your town hall and your base is more important than it is to create items. Okay, that covers everything in today's video. If you did like the episode, please do consider hitting that subscribe button above. Uh, if you have any questions about this video or any of my other content, feel free to contact me over on Twitch where I do live stream or join our community Discord. Both links are available below the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.